Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you the basics of creating a seamless pattern in Affinity Designer. I started out with a square that is 100 by 100 millimeters and I set my nudge in the preferences to exactly the same size, 100 millimeters. That way when I move anything with the cursor keys, it moves by just that distance. The square is turned into a symbol with eight more symbols around it to give me a live preview. So when I work in the symbol, all my nine tiles get updated immediately. I can move the circle freely within the square. As soon as I reach the border, we see the problem. I need to create a duplicate on the other side, or in this case, on the top as well as the bottom. That's the nature of the seamless pattern. In order to make it seamless again, I need to duplicate my circle and place it on the exact position on the other side. I can now go in and add to the pattern, change the color, and it will work on all my tiles. It's the same when I work with lines, as long as they cover the whole width of my base square, it works fine, I can rotate them work horizontally or vertically and it will tile seamlessly. It is easier though if you place those tiles inside now a square because you can see the overlap of the other symbols will be visible now if I place them within the rectangle make sure that my shapes go over the edge it will work. The clipping mask now contains the design. It works fine as long as we are staying within vertical and horizontal lines. Once I start rotating, you can see the pattern will go completely out of whack. In order to create something that is diagonal, I would choose a different approach by taking the rectangle, skewing it to get the right angle that is tiling and then duplicating the missing elements into the corners. Those shapes can then be taken and duplicated and moved into position. Now the tiling needs to happen on the other side. So I move that white line over and we have a diagonal pattern. I can then go in and duplicate the shapes, mirror them, overlay them with 50% alpha, put another line on it and create a more intricate crisscross pattern. One thing that's not working well in seamless patterns is the gradient it will show the tiles unless I work with the radial gradient or a linear gradient that has the start and end color identical and even that one just works in horizontal or vertical alignment. Another common issue is the design being larger than the tile. In this case the dragon is bigger than my tile. I don't want to scale it down so I arrange it inside my clip mask and duplicate it into all four corners to make it seamless. And then I can move my dragon freely within the clipping mask to place him the way I want the design to look. And even though he is larger, he is overlapping, it still ends up being a seamless pattern. It doesn't really matter how you use the setup, if it's simple wavy patterns based on lines, circular designs with simple shapes, or something more intricate like the floral design from an earlier video tutorial on seamless pattern I created with basic shapes that are just repeated throughout the design or a combination of geometric patterns with illustrations on top like these superhero fabric designs I did a while back. I can easily change the colors, change the designs, replace some of the items. I use the same approach for game art. These are samples of tiles used for a texture pack for Minecraft. If you learned something today, Hit the like button to celebrate your new bit of knowledge. To help you remember everything you've learned even better, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment below to let me know what you'd like to see on this channel or on my website. And I'll see you again soon.